Hey guys and welcome to my short little review on the Subpack M2 Portable Subwoofer. I'll be going over three things. First, I'm going to explain what a Subpack is. Uh, second, I'm going to compare it to a regular subwoofer. And last but not least, I'm going over user questions I got from a survey I did on Reddit. So let's start. Okay, so here's the actual unit. Um, it's basically a small backpack that has uh, an amplification unit and a vibration unit. And the basic idea is that it allows you to feel subfrequencies the way you would in a club with a big sound system. Well, I like to use it in my music production. So what you do is you just put it on and connect it to your computer and I'm going to show you how. So you basically just put it onto your back and then you can connect these two straps here so that it sits tight onto your body. And the amplification unit has a small little clip. So what I do is I just clip it onto my mouse pad here. The next thing is to connect it to the line in. You connect it to wherever your music comes from, like your mobile phone or for me, my audio interface and I just use the headphones out of my audio interface into the line in. And I like to do it this way so I can use my monitors and I don't need to use headphones because I don't like using headphones so much. So now you can switch it on, start your music and slowly adjust the intensity knob until it feels right. Okay, so that's basically how you use it. And while we're at it, I'm going to show you how loud it is without the monitors playing. So I'm going to play a very bass heavy track now. And I think you can definitely hear it rumble and just compare it to my voice, like the loudness level. Now the thing is, once I press it against my body or once I have it on, it starts to become way more silent. So just take a look and I press it against my body. It's very silent. Okay, so now I'm going to compare the subpack to a regular subwoofer. And I have a subwoofer under my desk here, which cost about 100 euros less than the subpack, but I had to invest into bass traps and room treatment in order to get it to work well. So I think the comparison is okay in terms of price range. Okay, first, the accuracy. Um, well, the subpack is very accurate. After you get used to it, you can do very good mixes with it. The um, definitely pro here is that um, you can have a sort of confidence with your low end, which I not experienced before. Okay, the next thing would be the volume. Uh, as I showed you, the subpack is quite silent and with a subwoofer you always have the problem that um, neighbors can hear you if you live in an apartment or that your uh, brother in the other room is getting pissed off or something. You do not have the problem with the subpack because you are the only one experiencing the subfrequencies. So you can save a lot of volume when using the subpack. I always had the problem that I was producing and I thought like, hmm, I wanna uh, hear the bass better, so I turned up the volume. And this does not happen with the subpack because I can just set the intensity right and then I can save so much volume and in the end save my hearing when producing. Which brings me to another point. Um, there's a specific way I like to wear the subpack and I'm going to show you just now. I like to use it sitting upright like this and have the straps on. So it presses nice against my chest and my back and then I can just straight up use it. It works good. But if I have a, a posture like if I hunch my shoulders 
and the shaking unit really presses against my spine. Um, I get a sensation called bone conduction, you can google it, which is basically when your skeleton system is shaking and it creates a resonating sound. Well, subpack versus subwoofer. I have to admit, I rarely use my subwoofer anymore since I got this subpack. But maybe that's because I live in an apartment and I can't play music too loud, especially at night. And also I'm very aware of preventing hearing loss, so I'm comfortable with using this more than my subwoofer. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to the user questions, which I got from a small survey I did over on Reddit. First question. We want a review on it. Does it work? Controls? Bugs? I don't know. Well, as I mentioned, it does work. But there was one little problem I've experienced. I am using these adapters to um, hook up the line in with my audio interface. And one time the adapter was uh, not sitting right with the cable. So there was this uh, electronic noise going into the line in and the whole thing started to really rumble. So my tip would be to always keep the intensity all the way to zero and then slowly bring it up to check if, if everything is all right. Does it help you make better decisions when you're mixing? Well, um, it gives me more confidence when mixing my low end. So I don't know if, if I make better decisions, but I know that the mixing decisions I make are exactly the way I want them to. I want them to feel in a club because it feels so accurate, so it works well for mixing. Does it get tiring after a while, especially in production versus listening to music? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I find myself using less volume overall when using the subpack. So in terms of ear fatigueness, it definitely is uh, less tiring. How tight does the backpack need to be on? Does it feel better if you're sitting down and it's sandwiched between your back and your chair? Well, as I told you, I like using it sitting upright and having it with the both straps against my chest and my back. I find it uh, more comfortable that way. I think that when leaning back, it doesn't feel as good as when you're sitting upright. Can it really be a sub-substitute where you just cannot accommodate a subwoofer, such as in a flat or apartment? Um, yes, definitely, because you don't have any loud volumes playing that neighbors could hear. Uh, it gives you good mixes, as I told you. And will it make me shit myself? Well, you'll find out once you figure out how to play the brown note. Okay, last question. I've been looking for an unbiased review that answers one question. Is it really worth your money? Is it going to be just a novelty item or does it actually become something you cannot live without? Okay, so I don't like the idea of telling somebody that you need this product or wow, you, you, like, you need analog synthesizers to produce music, no. It is a subwoofer alternative, it, wor it works great. And if you want to see for yourself, I would suggest going into a store and trying it. And then you can decide whether or not you want one. The way I see it is that you should first think about if you already have a subwoofer in the system and if don't, if you want a subwoofer, you should definitely take it into consideration. So in conclusion, I like my subpack. And I would encourage all of you to go out in the store and try it if you can. I hope you liked the video. I'm new to this whole YouTube thing, so don't be too hard <laughs> with the critique. But if you didn't like something or if you did like something, leave it down in the comments. To support me, just follow me on my social media. The accounts are all linked down in the info box. Thanks and goodbye.